Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto from Erie Community College near Buffalo, New York. And today we're going to discuss standard units of measurement. So there's an international system for measurement units, more commonly known as the metric system. The USA is the only country in the world that has not fully adopted the metric system and still uses the old imperial system. There are seven base units, length, mass, time, electric current, temperature, substance, and luminous intensity. And then, of course, you can derive other units from these base basic units. And then there's a prefix used for the decimal system. So here's the SI metric for larger numbers. You can see the prefix here. Tera, giga, mega, kilo, hecto, deca. These are the symbols. These are the exponent or the power, 10 raised to the power of. This is the absolute value. And here's the common word that we would know. So deca is 10, as in a decade. Hecto, 100, kilo, thousand, mega, million, giga, billion, tera, trillion. So just think about computer storage, RAM, random access memory, or RAM, read-only memory. They're often expressed in these units. You can think about the national debt in 2018. I think it was somewhere around $21 trillion. So based on a population of about 320 million people, that's $65,000 for each and every person in the United States. This slide shows the metric prefix, but for smaller units. So the smaller units would be deca, centa, milla, micro, nano, and pico. Again, the symbols, the exponent raised to the power of, the absolute value, and the word. So deca, again, a tenth as in decade, centa, Think about a centa, century, centipede, milli, a thousand. Think about millennium, micro, as in a micron, nano, as in a nanometer, and pico, as in a picometer. Very small unit. So when we talk about microns, we talk about the size of a FM frequency modulated spot. At 2400 SPI, a single spot would be 10.6 micron. In electrophotography or zoography, laser toner, the typical particle size is about 5 microns. And in offset lithography, the ink film thickness, or the IFT, is typically around 1 micron. And then when we get into spectrophotometry, the wavelength of the light is in nanometers, from 400 to 700 nanometers as visible light. And then when we get into inkjet digital printing, the drop size from the inkjet print head at the nozzle is somewhere between perhaps 2 or 80 picoliters. Okay, let's talk about the basics here. So the level of math skill required in printing is usually at a basic level, perhaps just high school. So we're converting fractions to decimals and perion to metric. So a standard calculator that you find on your smartphone can perform most of these practical mathematical operations such as addition or subtraction, multiplication, and division. The imperial, or the U.S. units, need to be converted. So the most common place we need to do this is for paper basis weight, which is in basis. We want to convert this into grammage or metric grammage, which is GSM. Now, occasionally, we may need the higher functions in the calculator and make it a scientific calculator, or perhaps maybe even use it in an Excel spreadsheet. Here is a slide of a conversion that I have given to you, and it's posted at the paper cutter. This is the fractional 1 4th, 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32nd, 1 64th. And this is its decimal conversion into inches and into millimeters. So, of course, 1 fourth is 0.25. 1 eighth is 0.125. 1 sixteenth is 0.063. 
one thirty second is point oh three one and one sixty fourth is point zero one six. So here's the decimal in inches and here's the decimal in millimeters. Realizing that there's twenty five point four millimeters in an inch. Let's now talk about length, how far apart two objects are, that's called distance. And we can measure that distance with length. The metric uses the base meter, M, then there's centimeters, 100 centimeters in a meter, millimeters, 1,000 millimeters in a meter, microns, 1 million microns in a meter, and nanometer, 1 billion nanometers in a meter. So the imperial U.S. units, of course, we have the inch, and there's 12 inches in a foot, and there's three feet in a yard. A mile is 5,280 feet, or about 1,600 meters. So if you run a 5K race, you're running 3.1 miles. If you drive in Canada, they're in the metric, so kilometers. So if you drive 62 miles per hour, you're driving 100 kilometers per hour. And again, an inch is 0 0.0254 meters, or 2.54 centimeters, or 25.4 millimeters. Conversely, a meter is 39.37 meters, 0.39 centimeters, or 0 0.039 millimeters. One micron is four one hundred thousandths of an inch, so tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, four one hundred thousandths of an inch. The way I like to remember it is that there's four zeros, one, two, three, four, followed by the four. That's the way I use it. And when we think about the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second. In lab, we need to measure the thickness of paper and we'll do that with a micrometer. So the image on the left here is the micrometer, and the image on the right here is the caliper. So the micrometer is kind of like a screw where you turn it. It may be an analog device uh, with a veneer. So this is a veneer here. The caliper is typically a slide, kind of like a slide rule. It's faster and more convenient. It's also electronic and digital. Some examples of length measurements would be the size of a sheet of paper or a blanket, the plate, or packing. The area is the length times the width. And if you want the volume, it's the length times the width times the height, or it's just the area times the height. We often measure the amount of paper by its height. You could do this to a skid or a load or a pallet a pile or a lift. We can check the caliper thickness of a piece of paper. We can do this for the paper, the blanket, the plate, and the packing. We can do an inch count for sheet quantities. Ink film thickness, IFT. The anti-setup spray powder is measured in microns as well as the electrophotographic laser toner particle sizes. Screen rulings can be measured in lines per inch or dots per inch or spots per inch or pixels per inch. The size of the dot in terms of its diameter, whether it be a spot or a dot, can be measured in microns. Register fit move adjustments. Most of the presses are foreign made, so they're going to use metric units. And trapping overlap. So these are all examples of measuring distances or lengths and then paper cutting for final trim fold sizes. Let's now discuss weight. Mass or weight is the amount of matter. Weight is the force from gravity, and it's how heavy or light an object is. The metric system measures weight with grams or kilograms or milligrams. In the U.S., the imperial units are ounces and pounds and ton. So one pound equals 16 ounces. One pound is 453.59 grams. One gram is 0 0.0022 pounds. And one ton is 2,000 pounds. Typically, any of the 
U.S. currency notes or bills, a $1 bill, a $5 bill, a $10 bill, a $20 bill, is almost one gram. It's 0.97 grams. A nickel, a single coin nickel, is five grams. Let's look at some examples of weight. Certainly paper basis weight, whether it be 50, 60, 70, 80, or 100 pound paper. Basis weight is always 500 sheets or a ream. The area size varies with the paper grade or the parent basic size. Paper weight can then be in grammage, GSM, grams per meter squared. We have cans of ink that are in either typically one pound or five pound metal cans. When we mix spot colors or Pantone colors, we'll be using a analog or digital scale for that to measure their weights. Coating drums, 55 gallon drums. When you mail postage through the United States Postal Service, USPS, a one ounce letter is currently, I think, around 52 cents for first class. We can measure coating weight thicknesses. Let's now discuss volume. Volume is the amount of a three-dimensional space. Volume is the length times the width times the height. In the metric system, volume is a liter or a milliliter. In the imperial U.S. system, we have teaspoons, tablespoons. Three tablespoons make a teaspoon and ounces. We have a cup, which is eight ounces, a pint, which is two cups or 16 ounces, a quart, which is two pints or 32 ounces, and a gallon, which is four quarts or 128 ounces. One gallon is 3.7 liters, and one liter is 0.26 gallons. One ounce is 29.6 milliliters, and one milliliter is 0.034 ounces. Here's some examples of volume. When we mix chemicals, certainly fountain solution concentrate, we have to mix it with a certain dosage or concentration. Somewhere around one to two ounces per quart. So the midpoint, if it's 1.5 ounces per quart, that means we'd be using six ounces a gallon because there's four quarts in a gallon. In flexography or flexo, the depth or the volume of that analog cell is measured in BCMs, which is billion cubic microns. Another unit of measurement is time. It's the duration between two events, the beginning and the end, start and finish, past, present, now, and the future. So there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day. One hour equals 3,600 seconds, and one-tenth or 0.1 hour is six minutes. Some examples of measuring time would be for labor reporting for payroll, costing, and estimating, machine run speeds or cycle speeds or throughput rates, sheet fed is the revolutions per second, the minute or hour, sheets per hour, impressions per hour, and web or roll presses is typically feet per minute, FPMs. If we want to track make ready times or setup times or change over times or wash up times, we would use time for that. Typically for the Ryobi 2800s, we need about 45 minutes for wash up time. Scheduling purposes, productivity time studies. Another unit of measurement is temperature. And temperature is the amount of heat, whether we're cold, warm, or hot. We can use the Fahrenheit scale, where Fahrenheit is Celsius times nine fifths which is 1.8 plus 32. Celsius or centigrade is the Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. And then we can use the Kelvin scale, which is typically how we measure light sources. So 5,000 Kelvin or 5,000 K. And of course, the three states of matter are solid when it freezes, liquid at room temperature, and then a gas or a vapor when it boils and evaporates. Here are some examples of temperature. Fountain solution, 
the delivery pile, we'd use an infrared IR heater or dryer. Ink rollers, chiller rollers, certainly on web presses. An IR infrared pyrometer is non-contact. Color temperature of light sources, 5 Kelvin, D50. And typically the human body is at a normal temperature of 98.6 plus or minus 2.1. A single standard deviation is 0.72. And a pyrometer, pyro means fire, pyrotechnics, fireworks, and paper, relative humidity, and percent moisture content. Photometry is a measurement of visible light, and the standard unit is called the candela, abbreviated CD. And the candela is the luminous intensity, or what we would refer to as the brightness of a light source. So lumens is the amount or the quantity of the light that gets emitted from the light source. Lux is the amount of light falling on the object at the surface area. This is distance dependent using the inverse square law. So if something is doubled in distance, it's one quarter or 25%. And one lux is equal to one lumen per meter squared. So in photometry, we have photopic, which is daylight vision, using the cones. And then we have scotopic, which is night vision, using the rods. Again, the inverse square law, the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So light is not linear. So light will fall off or fade or spread or dilute as you increase the distance. So at five times the distance, you're only at four uh, percent because five squared is 25 and one twenty-fifth is four percent so that's one of the reasons why a flash on a camera is not very effective over long distances here are some examples of photometry and photography using film or digital image capture so in the old days we used to use analog film based proofs and plates for exposures that's photometry measuring the solid ink density, or SID, the SID. Colorimetry and spectrophotometry, so if we're making color measurements with C-Lab, LCH, or Delta-E. In color management, we use ICC profiles from scanners and cameras for displays and for printers. The color temperature of light sources, as we mentioned before, 5K, 5 Kelvin, D50 for daylight 50. In the viewing booth evenness from left to right, top to bottom. And for ink formulation to make sure that inks are not metameric or have metamerism. And then of course, gloss measurements for coatings. So for the standard viewing conditions, we use ISO 3664. And for the standard observer, we use a 1931 standard observer as compared to the 1964 10 degree observer, we used a 1931 2 degree observer. And spectrophotometry is typically between 400 and 700 nanometers. So speed is not a basic unit, but it's derived from the other basic units. Speed is the distance divided by the time. Speed is S equals D divided by T. So sheet fed presses, we measure the speed in sheets per hour, SPH, or impressions per hour, IPH. You've seen the Ryobi 2800, where the maximum speed is about 10,000 sheets per hour. On a web or a roll press, we often talk about feet per minute, or FPM. The Ryobi 2800, when it's running at 10,000 sheets per hour, we know that it has a plate cylinder circumference of 21 and an eighth of an inch. So that means it's probably traveling around 3.3 miles per hour, or 293 feet per minute. So let's have more conversation about speed, slow and fast, the tortoise, the turtle, and the hare, the rabbit. So why are sheet fed presses slower than web? Well, that's because on a sheet fed press, you have to stop the sheet and side guide it. Or on a web press, because it's a continuous roll, you never have to stop or side guide the sheet of paper. Uh, Gravure and Fluxo are very fast because they have no gap. They're gapless. And a folder is very fast because the vacuum wheel We'll pick up the very next sheet immediately after the last sheet is cleared. You don't have to wait for any type of cyclical repeating patterns or anything like that. 
most people walk around three miles per hour and they run at about 11 miles per hour. A horse can run at f about 44 miles per hour. I'm th I think the fastest human is about 30 miles per hour. Where a cheetah is 75 miles per hour, a marlin fish is 80 miles per hour, and a falcon bird is 242 miles per hour because it's on a nose dive straight down. The, Ryo the Ryobi 2800 slowest speed is around 4,000 sheets an hour, and the maximum fastest speed is around 10 or 10.5 thousand sheets per hour. Uh, a production printing press uh, could be as fast as 20,000 sheets per hour, where a web press could be 3,000 feet per minute. A typical office laser printer is around 40 pages per minute, which is 2.4 thousand pages per hour. And our Ricoh Pro C5200S, which we purchased in 2018, is rated at 65 pages per minute. Okay, thank you very much for participating and being involved in this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And as usual, have a good day and we'll see you soon. Bye now.